Okay guys, so you have been telling me what you want to see next on this little series uh, 2D shooter game we're building here and one of them I was directly messaged on Discord asking if we can do a sort of spawner system. So where we have our enemies, they're currently just sat there as they are, um, but what we're going to do, we're going to take those enemies delete them from the scene and have an enemy spawner that spawns different enemies. We can make multiple of these spawners and have offset timers for when they will actually spawn. Um, and we can do them so they can spawn different enemies. But for this one, we're just going to get um, a bunch of different spawners that can spawn different enemies at different intervals in time, which will be pretty cool for our game. So let's actually implement it. Now, if you haven't seen this series, or it's not really, it's just mini tutorials uh, from doing bits, uh, but you want to see the previous one so you know exactly where we're at, you can head over to the link down below that will show you the the playlist either i'm either going to show you the playlist or i'm going to give you the link to the previous video we'll see all right guys so let's actually start this tutorial okay guys as i said we have this current scene with four enemies in the scene we have our player who can shoot the enemies um we have the enemies themselves and then obviously just this little area we can battle in now, the obvious issue is once we kill them, no more spawn, and also, they all start off here by default, which isn't cool. So let's take these enemies, because we have a prefab off and we can just drop enemies anywhere, let's just delete all the enemies in our scene, goodbye, they're all gone, bye-bye. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to create a new empty, and we're going to call this spawner. I'm going to select a little icon up here, so you can click on this little cube and select an icon. I'm just going to choose a little red icon for red enemy. And you can see right here, this spawner object is just sat there. Uh, we have this spawner and we can move it around using the X and Y positions. I'm actually going to set the spawners to spawn them just outside of the area. So we're going to set this at 7, um, 0, and we'll just do 0. So they're going to spawn right above us for now. Um, and let's add a script called the enemy spawner. Just like that, hit create and add. And this is going to basically just add a script. What we can, we can, we can customize. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say. My brain went dead. So we can double click on this, spa uh, this spawner and open up in whatever text editor you have. I'm using Visual Studio Code. Um, let's just zoom in a lot here. Uh, let's remove this. And there we go. So we have this now. Now we want a couple of variables, so we're going to start off with serialized field. This just makes it public or seeable inside Unity Editor. It tells Unity Editor that you want to be able to edit this value, uh, this variable inside the editor. I'll show you what I mean in a moment. Uh, and we're going to have a private, um, and let's call this a float, and this is going to be a spawn rate. So we'll call this the spawn rate, and this will be how often the enemy spawn. We can actually set this to a default of, let's say, one second, um, or one float, which is uh, going to be done in seconds. Um, and there we go. We could then have a serialized field, and we're just going to use a game object of um, enemy prefab. Now, you can, you can use an array of enemies, and you can spawn random enemies. Uh, but for this tutorial, I'm just going to spawn one type of enemy. If you want to see an array of enemies spawning, then let me know down below and we can do... Actually, you know what? Let's do an array. Enemy prefabs. So this is going to be our array of objects. It's just going to randomly spawn any one of our objects we choose here. So there we go. Now we've got that. What we want is a start method. We also want a private IE numerator. Um, and we're going to call this spawn enemy or spa spawn spawner. We're going to call this spawner because this is actually going to repeat spawn enemies. We're going to create a, uh, a wait for seconds called wait. And we're going to set this equal to a new wait for seconds. And we're going to pass in our spawn rate. Now, this is going to create a, um, this is going to create a calling a wait. Um, so, so we every time every time we yield return weight, it's gonna give us that spawn rate there. Um, we want to now do a while called true. Now you can pass a variable in here like spawning is equal to true. And I know a lot of people are gonna say if you use while true, it's gonna crash the game because as soon as that runs, it's gonna infinitely run. Well, if you if you're using an I the numerator, you can actually pause this and actually fix it by doing yield return 
wait. Now this is basically just going to say, okay, so we've got this while, but we're going to pause this while every single one frame. Um, let's create a serialized field called private ball, and we're just going to say spawning. Is or can spawn. And we're going to set that to true by default, right? So let's just do this. This could actually be a cool little thing. So if we turn this off, this will allow it to, um, this will stop it spawning if we turn this off, basically. Um, and in here, we're going to have, in our start, we're going to say, uh, start coroutine, cor cor coroutine, um, and we're going to say spawner like this. So we're just going to say start the coroutine, and we're going to start the spawner script. Now, normally you pass a string in here. For this one, I'm going to pass it like this. It doesn't really matter how you pass it. I'm pretty sure you can pass it anyway. Uh, and now we can do our function in here. We can either call a function called spawn, or we can write our spawn logic inside this. For this simple story, I'm just going to write the spawn logic here. It's pretty straightforward. Um, we're going to basically just say um, instantiate a new enemy prefab, right? So we're just going to say enemy pre enemy pre. Oh, we're doing prefab. So we need to get a random enemy when we uh, get this. So let's get a random enemy. Let's say game object uh, enemy to spawn is going to be equal to, and then we can get a random. We need a int rand is equal to random dot range between zero and enemy prefabs dot length minus one is this inclusive range exclusive so we can just do length like that and that will get us all our enemies in that that range uh, exclusive means the number won't actually be brought up to. So let's say if this is, so this is zero and this is five, it will only actually do zero to four. Um, weird how it works, basically. Exclusive just means it won't actually include that number, but it will go up to that number. I know, I don't know why they don't make it inclusive, or I think it would make more sense, but this works perfectly for us. Anyway, back to this. Enemy to spawn will now be our enemy prefabs with our random number in there and now we can then instantiate our enemy to spawn we can give it the current transform dot position and then we can say quaternion dot identity to spawn it at its prefab rotation um which probably doesn't make sense the identity rotation the, the the rotation it currently has the object um and this will just spawn in our enemy um, and that's that's that. Um, obviously, this enemy will be destroyed later on, um, and this should be good to go. Um, we could also just remove this and just put it in there, but just for neatness, we'll do it like this. So this should work how we expected. So let's actually try this out. I haven't actually tested this, so let's let's figure this out. Um, I'm actually going to not. I guess I should. Um, so we got can spawn, and we need our enemy. So we're just going to add our one enemy for now. Uh, but we will create a custom variant. Actually, let's do it now. Let's duplicate this enemy and call this enemy 2. I know, creative, right? And we're just going to change its color to be yellow, like a bright yellow 2. Uh, and that's the only difference between the enemies right now. But you could add some faster enemies. You know what? Let's do that, actually. Let's add in a faster enemy. Enemy 2 is a lot faster. You've got to be careful of those guys. Let's drop in enemy 2 here, and we'll leave at speed. Can spawn. We're also going to leave for two seconds for its spawn rate, just so we were, you know, it, it's not too fast right now because, you know, it's going to be a bit confusing. So let's hit play and see if we get any errors. None so far. Now, once we wait two seconds, an enemy has spawned. Let's kill him. We've got a faster enemy. So you can see enemy two, enemy clone, enemy clone. You can see that it's random every time. We've got two normal enemies in a row there. Uh, we got an enemy two. What are we going to get this time? Enough for enemy one. Enough for enemy one. We're going to get enough for enemy one. We do. <laughs> Kill them all. And there you go. So that's how spawning works. And we can have it randomly spawn loads of enemies. We can also just duplicate this spawner. Call this spawner two. I don't know. Um, we can set its y to zero. And its x to let's say 10. To pull it outside this side. And let's make its spawn rate a lot slower. We're going to set it to five. And then let's get another one. And just pull it at negative 10. And we'll make this one spawn rate 
three. Uh, just random. So you see we've got three spawners. Now, I'm not going to put one here because if they all start spawning, it's going to mess me up pretty quickly. But let me just give you a quick demonstration of what this is about to do. So let's just hit play. So we're going to get these ones at the top here spawning. You can see, oh, we've got the one on the left spawning too. And the right, they're coming in from all directions. And there you go. So that is how you can create a really simple spawning system for your 2D top-down shooter game here where you can just infinitely blast the hell out of your enemies. Now, I hope this tutorial has been straightforward and it helps you all out. I'm gonna, it's hard to speak while I'm battling enemies to the death. It's just, you know, a unique talent I have or don't have because I can't do it. But anyway, um, so I hope you have learned something valuable here. If you have, don't forget to leave a thumbs up. It really does help. I hope this tutorial has helped out a lot for a lot of you. Um, but yes, and if you need any help, you get stuck, jump in our Discord. The link's down below. There's a bunch of friendly people. There's mainly programmers, developers, web developers, game developers, a bunch of variety in there. Come in, drop some, ask a question, do whatever you need to. Even if you just want to chat or be a part of the community, you can jump down there and join us. Uh, don't forget to leave a comment on this telling me what you thought about the video, what you want to see next in this series. If you want to see that, I've got some other ideas to go on this, uh, but we will leave it at this one for now. But anyway, guys, let's leave it here. Thank you for watching this video, and I will see you in the next one. Peace out.